Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be making this really cool abandoned apartment building with these tentacles growing out of it. It's going to be really fun. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Blender. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a really cool uh, photograph that I found uh, to base, um, to create our apartment structure. So we'll start with that. So I grabbed this off of Pexels. Uh, it's a cool website and this uh, photographer, Alexander Pizarek. Uh, did this really beautiful photograph. This is in Hong Kong. And we're going to use this. Um, so it's a free download. You can download that. And we use it as a texture. Um, and I'm just going to drag it into my scene and use it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything. I'm going to A and X to delete all. And then it goes Shift A, Mesh Plane. And then I'm going to rotate Y at 90 degrees and scale it up a bit. This is going to be my apartment. Now let's get this material. I'm going to switch over to the shader editor and I'm going to click new to create a new material. I'm going to call this apartment. And then what I want to do is in the shader itself, I want to grab the texture that I downloaded from that and just drag it in. And there it is. Now I can plug this directly into the base color. And if we switch over to material view, you can see there it is. Now we're going to be using the uh, UVs a bit. So let's go ahead and get that laid out. So I'm going to switch this over to the UV editor and I will go into edit mode. And you can see when we go into edit mode, if you hit A to select all, it, we're going to get the image, it pops up and it shows us the UV, which it's this, basically it's the, the polygon that we have. We just have one face, right? That one face has one UV, which is a UV is, um, it's a flat image that basically says, this is how all the faces of your object um, are mapped onto a 2D space. So if you have a really complex 3D shape, you unwrap it and those UVs, right, go flat. And so all those faces are now these like spread out in this flat sheet. And then that's how you can put textures onto things. So by default, there's always a UV on the standard Blender uh, mesh. So that um, plane that we created had a UV on it and that's just what it looked like. So we can adjust it. So instead of changing like the mesh or rotating the object, we can rotate the UV and you can see it changes the texture itself. So I'm gonna rotate uh, y 90 degrees and I'm going to scale X and I'm just going to kind of, you know, position it so that it looks like the proportions are about right. Cool. So now we can go back to the, uh, actually we we'll split this view because we're going to keep the shader editor up. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to keep the UV editor up in case we need it. What we're going to do is start modeling out some shapes in the surface based on this texture and, you know, the way it looks so that we have some 3D geometry to go along with this image. So what we're going to do first is um, I'll just click on the object. We'll go back into edit mode and I will deselect everything. And I'm going to hit control R to create a loop cut. And then I just need to zoom. I'll just bring my view down a little bit so I can see it really clearly. So control R for a loop cut. We'll get this yellow slice right down the middle or horizontal, depending on which edge you hover over. And we'll click once and then with out clicking again, you can see if you move your mouse, that edge is going to slide around along the surface. And we just want to line it up with something that makes sense. So there we go, like we're on the edge of that. Control R, do it again. Just line that up. Looks pretty good. It's a bit confusing looking at this at an angle. So I'm going to hit three on my number keypad just to jump to a orthographic flat view. If you don't have a number keypad, you can also just click up here. If you click the X, you're going to look straight on. Or depending on how yours is oriented, you may have to Click the Y to look at it straight on. Just keep that in mind. All right, cool. So we've got those guys. So now let me show you how this is going to work. If I go to three, which is face mode in edit mode, I can select this new face that we just made and hit E to extrude. And then I can grab X and just slide that forward a bit. And now we've got this extended section of the apartment block, which is cool. And it keeps the texture because we're using EVs. We get these smears because we haven't laid out any UVs for these particular new faces that have just been created, but we can change that. We can actually come in and uh, put some stuff on these. So one way to do this would be to come over here and let's look at this from the side. So just straight on the Y. And what we can do is hit U and with just that face selected, hit U, this brings up the UV unwrapping menu and we can project from view and we'll project uh, this polygon as uh, basically it'll take the, sh the way the polygon is shaped, the way it looks right now from this perspective, and it will make a UV that matches that shape. So if I was to look at this like at a weird angle and do that same thing, project from view, you'll see, see how that looks just like this shape from a distance, but this isn't 3D. This is just a 2D projection of that shape into this space. So 
hope that makes a bit of sense. UVs would take some time to wrap your head around, but you will get there. All right, so now that we've got that, what we can do is uh, we can move this thing around and find something to uh, to place it on so that it looks looks right. So I could scale it up, maybe. I could put another window there. That could be cool. Just scale it up quite a bit for it to match, I think. Still, it lines up a little bit better for these tops. Nice. There we go. Now we've got windows on all sides. We're back into edit mode. Click back on the X. Control R, and I'm just going to line up maybe to right about here. Let's click a good cut point and I'll do the same over here. And then I hit three to go to face mode and I'm just going to delete those faces. So we're just going to have these guys as our apartments. Okay. Um, now let's do these little awnings. I think these are kind of cool. So I'm going to control R and I'll put a loop cut right down the middle and then I'll line it up here. this and then control R, bring it down, this control R, it's not up there, in between these two is what I want, control R, bam, and just grab right here, and we might go ahead and do one right down the middle, I think that'd be good, and I think I'll do two actually right down the middle, just create a little gap like that, then I can grab that edge, grab X and just bring that thing out. And then this one, which is a bit lower, uh, even we can grab this and bring it down a touch and then grab X, I can bring that out. So I'm just gonna go through and kind of repeat these steps bit by bit. I just keep adding in interesting details. So by hitting P to separate, what we've done is we selected a face, we hit P to separate it. It basically turns it into a new piece of geometry that maintains all the other attributes. So like the material, the UV, all that stuff stays the same. Then we go into edit mode for that object, which we've done here. Now we can just do loop cuts without having to like loop cut the entire thing like over and over again and create like lots of loop cuts. This will just make it a little easier for us to manage, I think. Um, it doesn't really matter, but We could do this, we could do the air conditioning unit. That makes sense because there's a lot of those. I'm going to control R. Actually, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hit P to separate. So I'm gonna select the main building, go into edit mode, select this plane, hit P to separate by selection, leave edit mode. Then we're gonna click on it to just get this new object that's been created. We're gonna go back into edit mode and then control R. And we're just going to do some loop cuts for the air conditioning unit kind of isolate that guy. There we go. And three, and then E, grab X, we're gonna bring it right out. And then what we need to do is set something for these, this outside. So let's, um, let's just hit U and Q projection, and then scale that down. And we'll just find something maybe like this, this wall area would be good. Yeah, that feels all right. Let's hit control plus with this interface selected. If we hit control plus, it's gonna expand our selection and just keep growing until this whole bit is selected. And then with this, we hit P, separate by selection. And now we can leave edit mode. And now we've got this as its own piece. So we can just hit F3 to re or F2 to rename that. Or just double click, um, Aragon unit. There we go, all right. Now I'm going to shift E to duplicate this guy. Grab Z, X, Y. Yeah, I'll just line up a few of these. If we look at it straight on like this, we can just hit G to grab. And let's set the origin to um, geometry. Yep. Object set origin, origin to geometry. That's what I meant. Just scale this one, D, scale Y, bring this over here. Now that we have all this kind of together, it's probably a good idea just to unify it just to one piece. Um, 
So let's take all of these things like that and then control J to join and that will combine it all back into one piece of geo. So that's a good way to work sometimes quickly like map things out like that. So yeah, looking good. Now what we can do is we can come over here and create an array modifier and we could send it, uh, let's see, up on the Z and maybe another array modifier and do this one on the Y. And we can just do maybe two or three. This will give us a nice big field of, um, field of these things. All right, now as for the material, let's, um, let's take the specular down on it and take the roughness right up. And I'm gonna create a bump node. And then what I'm gonna do is just take the color and just plug it straight up into the height and then take this normal and plug it into there. So this is gonna look at the color. It's gonna take the dark values and make them look like the little indents and the light values make it look like they're raised based on where we put lights in the scene. I'll take the distance down to like 0.1. That should be good. Just a nice little subtle detail. Let's go ahead and get some rendered uh, look to this. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep Seam World on. I'm gonna use a HDRI, so I'm gonna switch over to my World Shader, and I'm just gonna grab an HDRI from Polyhaven.com. So just there we are, Polyhaven, amazing Polyhaven.com, all supported through Patreon. Give them a look. Uh, we can get lots of great stuff. We're gonna get um, HDRIs though, is what we want. So let's just scroll down here, browse HDRIs. You can just grab anything that thinks looks cool. All right, so now I need to create an environment texture. And I'm going to plug the color into the, actually, no, <laughs> I could just click this and grab it. So once you've dragged it into your scene, it lives in your scene. You can delete that node. It'll still stay in your scene. You can use the little drop down menu to pick any texture that you've got in the scene. So using an environment texture just gets the interpolation right for the, um, the range. You can see that the dynamic range on this image is really high. So, um, that'd be fine. Okay. And let's grab a, uh, mapping node and a texture coordinate node, like the generated into the vector and the vector into the vector. And now we can rotate it and get that HDRI in just the right spot. Now, um, I'm gonna make a little bit more apartment, I think. So I'm gonna turn up that by two and maybe this by one. And then I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna shift D, grab Y, and then I'm going to rotate Z 90 degrees. I don't know if we'll actually see this in our shot depending on how we frame it. But, all right, let's add some volume to this. So I'm gonna create a volume scatter node and we are gonna plug the volume into the volume and I'll take the density down to like 0.01 and the anisotropy maybe to 0 0.9, 0 0.8, something like that. So I can go a bit denser, 0.05. And then let's create a light. I'm gonna go shift A, light, sunlight. And I'm just gonna rotate this guy around and I'm gonna turn it right up. So let's go light and we're going to go 1000 on this. Make it, that's way too bright. <laughs> let's go 100. There we go. And maybe give it a bit of an orange, orange haze. It's a bit too green. I'm going to open up shadows and turn on contact shadows. And I'm going to open up my render settings, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. And. Let's get a camera. So shift a camera, jump into our camera view, go to view, lock camera to view, and I'll just zoom out and come over around and we're going to turn on passport two. So go to the camera tab, viewport display and turn up passport two. It'll darken the outside so we can focus on what we're looking at. I take my density of my volume down to 0.02. And let's find a cool angle to work with. All right, cool. Now let's do the weird sci-fi bit. <laughs> um, we're going to create a similar system to what we did last time with geometry nodes where we drew out like some tentacle things and we're going to do tentacles again. I want kind of like vine like tentacles growing across these, uh, these structures. Okay. Hmm. So I'm going to go shift a, and I'm going to create a curve, a bezier, and we're going to go into edit mode, hit a to select all the vertexes and X to delete is uh, we're going to just bring this up and we're going to switch over to geometry nodes. Click new and 
I want to go for a uh, let's see curve to mesh. I'm going to drop this here, and I'm going to go ahead and create a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to click on the draw icon. If you don't have this, if you just hit T in the side menu, it'll pop out. I'll just draw that real quick. So we've got a curve that we can see, and I'm going to grab a circle, a curve circle. This will be my profile curve. And turn the resolution down and the radius down. And then I want to grab a, let's see, spline uh, parameter node. And I also want to get a spline set curve radius. So I'll plug this here and use the factor. There we go. So this, so taking the factor of the spline parameter into the radius, the set curve radius, basically says, okay, where are we on the curve? Are we at the start or the end? And the closer we get to the end, the smaller the number is going to get. So it's going to taper down the radius the further it goes. Then this bit turns it into mesh. So we take this curve circle object, and this now becomes the sort of master control for how, you know, what's the maximum diameter of this object going to be? This little curve circle then is lofted along that curve and follows the radius at every point. So it goes smaller and smaller as it goes. So now we've got this cool little thing. So now what I can do is I can come over here back to my camera view and I can click on surface to turn on drawing on the surface. I can go for absolute offset, offset of maybe 0.1. And then we should be able to just draw down the surface of the building. I'm gonna to wanna to reverse this um, so let's uh, invert. Uh, actually, we just do a color ramp. And I will drop the color ramp here on the factor and just flip these guys. That will change it for us, which is cool. I could also introduce a bit of noise um, into this. So let's go for a mix color. Drop this here, take the factor here, and then just turn it set to multiply. There's a multiply and just turn it up a little bit. Increase that scale. I'll just create a little bit more extra variation. Subtle, but it'll be good. All right, let's go ahead and create a material for this thing and really start getting a sense of this shot. So I'm going to pull this up, pull this back. And actually, I'll keep it zoomed in so we can see. A nice little detailed section here. That'll give us something to work with. And we're going to switch from geometry nodes back over to the shader editor and go to object mode, object shaders. And with this Bezier selected, we're going to click new, call this vines, and we are going to, let's create a Voronoi. I feel like that's going to be the way to go, Voronoi texture. Create a color ramp, color ramp, drop that there, distance into the factor, color into the base color, and then let's set some green colors like this. Now, because we're using geometry nodes, we're going to have to assign this uh, actually in geometry nodes. So let's head back over to geo nodes. And at the very end of our little pipe, let's go over here and set material, drop this here, and we're going to throw vines material onto that. Back over to the shader editor. All right, let's do some cool stuff with this shader. All right, so we got the Voronoi. Turn that scale right up and just maybe brighten up this in one a little bit, darken this one a touch. Let's grab a bump. I'm going to take the color into the height and the normal into the normal. Turn the distance down to like 0.1. And then let's make some noise into this. So let's come over here and grab a texture coordinate node and a mix node. Actually, we'll go mix RGB or mix color. And then let's grab a noise node. My favorite little trick, take the factor into the B, generated texture coordinate into the A, result into the vector of the Voronoi. So we're going to distort the Voronoi. We're going to turn that factor down with this noise. So if I slowly start to turn it up, it's going to start distorting everything really nicely in a cool way. So let's also come over here and instead of the generated, let's use the UV. 
because um, these curves automatically have some UVs baked into them, and I think it'll give us a bit of a nicer result. That detail up, look at that. That's really creepy. All right, let's um, let's use this system to drive some other stuff. Let's drive the roughness with this. I'm going to shift D to duplicate this color ramp. Click on the color swatch, turn the saturation off for both of these. And I'm going to brighten them up. I'll take one of these like right up to white and that one I'll just leave. And we'll take the distance into the factor. And we're going to plug this into the roughness. This is going to mean that some sections are going to be really reflective and kind of wet looking and other bits aren't. And we can decide where we want that to go. Let's bring these together. So there's a bit more of a contrast between them. And we can flip it as well, see what it looks like. The wet bit is the intersection. Maybe I like it. I like it the other way, I think. It has some subsurface to this. Let's bring it in a little bit. And we'll set the subsurface color to a dark greenish color. To be careful with going too dark, it's basically like turning it off. So you do need to have a little bit of it on. Let's come more to this sort of yellowish color here and just adjust that a little bit. Looks cool. Okay, now I want to really affect the specular as well. So I'm going to go over here and grab a Musgrave texture and I will shift D that color in, plug the height down into the factor. We can just leave them as is for now. And I'm going to plug this into the specular and then I'm going to turn the scale right up. And I'll turn the detail down and the dimension up. That will really scatter this thing, make it super, super like pinpricky. And I can play with these a little bit. This is just going to break up the uh, the look even more. Now, I feel like the color is quite uniform, so I might darken darken this section a bit. Maybe even like push this into a color like red, maybe. That's kind of cool. Now this is driving the bump as well, so we have to bear that in mind. Uh, maybe not quite red. Go back to that kind of yellowish. I feel like I might get something out of turning up my uh, ambient occlusion. Just where we get the contact point between the tentacles and the wall. So I'll look at this in render view. Let's see what that's looking like. Ugh. That is really cool adjust these colors a little bit more. I'm just going to do a hue saturation, drop it here, and I will shift the hue and just kind of play around with that to see if there's another color that looks good. Got a light, point light. Turn everything back on so I can find it. There it is. I'm going to turn it up to a thousand. Right into the building there and bring it up. Uh, orange light. Go back to my world shader and I'm gonna turn my strength down. Oh, that's that's moody. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and learned a few cool tricks that you can use in your next project. If you did, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out the Patreon where you can get this project file if you join up this month or next month. So check the published date of this video and head over to Patreon to check that out. You can also find on Patreon the full uncut version of this tutorial, which goes for about an hour and a half long, really worth checking out. You can also get that if you join on YouTube at the All Access Pass level and higher. Special thanks to all the Patreon supporters and everybody who has joined on YouTube. I really appreciate all of you. Thanks for helping to make tutorials like this happen. I will catch you in the next one. Until then, have a fantastic week. See ya.